Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel L. Conan, along with Spencer Israel, and we have Mike Bellafiori on the line. He's co-founder of S&B Capital. Mike, I know you're a little bit under the weather today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Joel. Yes, uh, myself, our two kids, and, and my wife uh, all seem to have caught the same thing all at once. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we just got to go to the overall market here. First of all, uh, just a nice rally here off the flash crash lows, uh, coming into some former support that uh, held the market up during the summer months, a little bit of spring, 2030, 2040 S&Ps area here. Getting a little pop today on some Draghi talk, some uh, some overhead supply up here. Uh, is it uh, time to be a little bit cautious up here, this resistance, or is uh, the bull alive and kicking? I thought so. I, th I think there's some overhead resistance in this 204 area on spies. That's uh, an area we've been watching. We had a, a some sell-off uh, yesterday with uh, some resistance into and close to that area. If you had to make me guess before the market opens, and that's not really how I trade, but if you had to make me guess, I'd, I'd, I would actually expect a little bit more follow-through to the downside uh, today. So if it sets up, we'll look for that. Um, discuss your, your trading style. I know you've, you've done it uh, with, uh, when you've been on the show previously, but uh, you're, you're one to do, do your homework, do some observing, and then let the market uh, give you some setups. And uh, just explain your style a little bit to our listeners. Yeah, so yesterday we are focusing on two stocks, Weight Watchers and Valiant, two different types of setups. Weight Watchers, something that's run up from the low single digits all the way up to about 19-ish. We had 17.50. That was a key level that we were looking for for the backside of the trade, meaning, hey, it had run up so much, we think it's up too much, but we're not going to stick our necks out there until we actually see the weakness until we actually see the momentum starting to wane, until we start to see the stock turning over. And that was if the stock could hold above, hold below 1750. I actually tweeted that um, not yesterday, but the day before saying, this is what I want to see in Weight Watchers. I want to see it holding below 1750 and I want to see it holding below there for time. If you go look at the charts from yesterday, it, we saw that exact pattern. And, and I'm looking for, clean, clear setups where I can trade with good size, have a really good risk reward, as opposed to predicting where Weight Watchers should go in six months. That's not, that's not my strength. My strength is let me try and catch meats, the, the, the meat on the bone of moves, so that I can trade them with good risk rewards and trade them with pretty good size. Um, and so we caught that move yesterday from 1750 all the way down to the close. I mean, it was a great, great trading setup. It just trended down, trended down, trended down below that 1750 level. I didn't have to be in it from 19 to 1750. I didn't have to be a market wizard calling the top. I could have missed and, and did miss actually uh, a good portion of the first huge red candle from the 19s down to 1820 and then start my position. And then a valiant yesterday was, uh, you know, that was a, that was a that was a play. That's a trade we're going to remember in six months. We're going to be talking about that trade in six months. And Ackman had the the huge double down, uh, which everyone's talking about today. But from our perspective, we had some guys trade that very nicely on the short side. Um, we had actually one seven figure trader who got caught in that in a little bit and was marked down. He's a big trader. He has a, he has a lot of room to the downside. He was marked down a million dollars in that position and ended up to pay uh, up over a million dollars in that position. And that was, that was a very, that was fun. I mean, watching that stock, <laughs> watching that stock move, that was fun. I mean, it went, it went all the way down to 88 and a half dollars and closed at, at one twenty five. Boy, that's a that's a tremendous move. Those are the types of event-driven opportunities uh, that we're looking for. 
Yeah, boy, that that's some kind of move. Um, let me go first back to the Weight Watchers because you know Valiant a lot of new. I mean, there's been news on Weight Watchers all, but you mentioned a level. You mentioned 1750. Now, without giving away your secret sauce here on the Benzinga's Pre Market Prep Show, is that is that something that you derived from the early trading? Is that something that you had? pinpointed before the market started or is it some kind of analytical you know computer cis generated sell signal or pivot level or is it just the good old mike bellafiore gut no it's so i like to trade so i thought weight watchers uh was overbought i thought it was overbought uh the day before that <laughs> but um look the oprah effect was was large um but I think a stock moving from in, in, in a day and a half, the, you know, the low single digits to $18 is, is I think we'd all agree, is a big move. Um, so date, so we think of stocks like that as growth stocks. We think of them as momentum stocks. And the way they typically trade, just to sort of give you an, a guideline, and, and there's, they're not all the same, but a guideline for trading a momentum stock is day one, the stock has a gap and go. Day two, the stock has a follow-through day to the upside. And day three, the stock gaps up and fails. And we actually had that pattern in Weight Watchers. And this is old school. I know you're an old school trader, so I know you understand this pattern. Um, so on day two, what we noticed, that's the, that's the follow-through day. On day two, we noticed that 1750 was VWAP okay. on day two. Okay. Uh, that's a price where institutional buyers and big big traders are, are buying it. And we noticed it couldn't trade below that 1750. It was just a very key support level. Um, a lot of inventory was traded back and forth. So we're just looking at uh, VWAP. We're looking at a key level where lots of volume is done. And we're looking for a, a key level that held and made the stock. It holding 1750 is what made it get up to 19. And so we think of... Uh, on day three, yesterday was day three for Weight Watchers. We think that's the day where the stock should gap up and fail. And we're looking for the backside of the trade. And the backside of the trade is when it actually starts to roll over and get below key support levels. So there was no special sauce to that. Everyone hopefully can look at that chart and see how important 1750 was. We have guys who, uh, these these levels, Peter Brand actually put a tweet out today, somebody I respect a lot, a veteran, veteran commodities trader, um, said that uh, trades find really good traders. And if you just sort of are patient, the trades become self-evident to good traders. That was one of those trades. I mean, it was, a, it was an easy trade. The hard part was just waiting and being patient enough for it to get below 1750s. But once it got below 1750 yesterday, it didn't. I mean, it didn't take a special trader to just be short and hold it. I mean, it, it never did anything but drip down. So do you, uh, I mean, is this something that, you you know, you trade with some size, you use as a day trade, and then, uh, you know, just call it a day in it and just reevaluate to find your new stocks tomorrow? Or is it something that, you know, you're carrying through, you know, for a day or two, hoping for a little bit more follow-through? Yeah, so we will look for follow-through today to the downside. I actually got short. I mean, I'm sorry, I got flat into the close. Um, our traders got flat into that into the close. There was some thought. We talked about this before the close that it would it might gap up a little bit today. We're, we're actually hoping for a gap up this morning and maybe a little bit of a run on the open, mispricing and and looking for areas to reshort it. Um, so you know, look if it popped up to 1750, that would be the the holy grail. That'd be the A plus A plus A plus setup. That's probably not going to happen. But um, we are looking for follow through to the downside in that today. Yeah, just one final thing on this trade. There's, you know, a lot of things that, uh, you know, just wanted to point out. And I see the first time it came through 1750, it kind of held there. And then it had a big spike down to 1650. Um, so, but then it came right back up to that 1750 area. I mean, if you don't catch it going through 1750, you know, 1740, 1735. The first time, there's a chance you might, you know, sell it in the hole here. I'm looking at 15-minute charts here. I mean, how do you, I mean, did you just do it the first time it did it, put your stop, 
I'll just say theoretically over 18, and then forgot about all the noise because that you know there was a rally in there from 1650 all the way back up to there. Um, just from an execution standpoint, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know when you know when did you use a sell stop, use a limit? How how did you get into the trade? And how I mean we ended when it had that buck rally because that you know that had some people probably scratching their head. Yeah, so great question. And look, we probably had ten traders trade that yesterday. They all traded it differently. Okay. Some guys, some guys are focusing on uh, catching that first red candle down from from nineteen and starting their position from from there. I started my position. I want to, I want to actually see the trade develop. I, I don't like to get out in front of trades, but some people do. There are a lot of really great traders who love to catch tops and bottoms. It's just not the way I look at markets. But just in terms of execution, we had that deep red candle down signaling a reversal. We had consolidation between eight, uh, 1865 and 1820. 1820 was a stubborn support level yesterday. When it got below there, I started my swing. Okay, not big. When it got below uh, 1750, I added a little bit more. When it pulled back into 1750 and was holding that level, I added a little bit, I added it a little bit more. Not like making a swing trade. You're asking absolutely the right question. If you're a momentum trader or a scalper, you could have, you may have hit that and gotten out of that position and then put it back on into 1750. It might not have hold, held it through a little bit of that up move. I'm swing trading that, so I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold to that up move. I'm trying to capture a move to 15 to 13, that, that area. So uh, I'm not going to, worry about that, that, that move up to the upside. In fact, I'm going to use that as an area to add to my position. I actually wanted, I wanted it to go back up to that 1750 area. Uh, did you, uh, did you have any traders get hurt, you know, on the long side in that yesterday? Yeah. So not, not on the long side, but on day two, we had traders, uh, lose, lose money on the upside, getting, trying to catch the front side of the trade. Um, we call that, you know, day one, day two, that's kind of the fun side of the trade. We actually had a meeting with some traders after the close um, on on Tuesday about, hey, this is remember, this is day two. This is a follow-through day. It's okay if you want to trade the fun side of the trade, if that's how you look at markets, but let's not lose too much money capturing the fun side. Let's save our ammo for the back side of the trade, uh, day three, day four, when this thing turns, and we can swing it to the downside. All right, uh, great breakdown of that trade, Mike. We really appreciate it. Now, you know, looking forward here, uh, Mickey D's blows away earnings here, just on a rampage here in the pre-market. 111.18 is where we're currently trading. Historical move for Mickey D's here. I know you like to trade, uh, you know, the movers in this one. Could you just give us some potential setups in Mickey D's today? Yeah, so I think the easiest setup, is you wait for the stock to show you if it can hold the gap. I like to use 1015 as a cutoff point for a stock showing me that it's holding the gap. 10 o'clock is a general area where things can reverse. So I like to give a stock a little bit past that time. 10 o'clock reversal is for intraday trading is, is, a, is a key moment. So if it hasn't pulled in, or it's still holding up really well, and it's past 10.15. It's above the UAP. Um, it's, it's holding a nice support area. That's uh, an opportunity there where uh, you can look for a swing for close of day highs uh, for McDonald's. And look, there are lots of strategies to trade this on the short side. But when you see a company that has blowout earnings uh, like McDonald's, for the for, for the next three days, um, I tend to want to look for long opportunities um, for swings. I may scalp on the short side here and there, but for long opportunities, I'm looking for swings. And you know, you know, conversely, you know, CTXX is a is a good example of crushes crushes their numbers, raises for the full year. AXP, another really good example of something, misses for the full year, uh, misses on revenue, misses for the full year on EPS. That's something I'm going to be trading over the next three days on the short side, looking for swings. Um, ACAT is another one from today. 
cut to EPS for the full year. That's something I'm going to be looking to be trading on the short side for the next couple of days if it sets up. Um, 3M, same thing. I'm going to be looking to trade on the short side if it sets up. So, it, and again, it's not about me being right or wrong because I'm wrong all the time. Okay? <laughs> it's not about that. It's about I have a system. I'm looking for, I'm not telling you McDonald's is going to go up if it holds its gap after 10 15. I'm telling you that's a good risk reward play. I'm telling you that's, if I do that a thousand times, I'm going to make money. We've Same been, thing with CTXS. Go ahead. No, oh, CTSX. Uh, just uh, just pulling up the chart of that one. Uh, you just you just going with going with the flow. You're not you're not trying to like get in right away, but you're trying to develop a plan over a few days. I think that's something we try and uh, emphasize on the show here as well. Uh, just got a minute or two left here. Um, so you're always going to the to the hot stocks movement. Do you have any stocks that you like to trade on like a daily basis that uh, you know you you, you kind of keep a close eye on maybe like an Apple or a Facebook or Twitter? Do you have any stocks like that? Yeah. So I can't stand when our new traders talk about trading Facebook every day. I can't stand it because I don't actually think for intraday traders. Uh, a, you need to do that, um, or B, you really do have a lot of edge unless you're a really great technical trader, uh, which is which is rare. But I think people get hurt by that as intraday traders by going to the same stocks over and over again. They just overtrade it. They they find setups that are not that good. I, I'll trade Facebook when it has earnings. Um, I'll trade Facebook when there's a catalyst behind it. And again, I'm not saying I'm right. I am not saying that at all. Okay. And you know, we've talked about this a lot. I do not have, you know, we certainly work one firm trading one type of style during one type of marketplace. We attack markets in one way. We, we certainly don't have all the answers. Um, but we do try and stick to what our strengths are and our strengths are finding stocks that have catalysts, news catalysts behind them and areas where there's a good risk reward on the long and the short side to trade them. Trading a stock every day, for us, um, the way that we trade, because there's no news catalyst behind it, um, are not as opportunistic as the Weight Watchers or the Valiants or, as you said, the McDonald's or the AXPs or the 3Ms or the ACATs or the CTXSs today. All right. We've been on the line with Mike Bellafiore, co-founder at S&P Capital, giving us uh, some straightforward explanations to his trading strategy and uh, key to success. Mike, thanks for coming on. Always enjoy speaking to you. We'll be chatting soon, I'm sure. Okay. Thanks, Joel.